Welcome to the Poultry Doc Podcast. Today we're tackling one of the biggest hidden challenges in backyard flocks, gastrointestinal parasites. In this episode, I'll show you the how, when, and why to safely deworm with the only FDA-approved option for backyard poultry. Let's dive in. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Poultry Doc Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Blaine Mosashek, and today we're back at our friend Maggie's house. What we want to focus on today are parasites, and specifically intestinal parasites, or roundworms, sequel worms, tapeworms, etc. And we're going to talk about how to recognize those and then also how to treat them. And so, Maggie, why don't you tell us a little bit about like some of the concerns you've had? You've probably read something online about worms and, and the forums and what to do about them and, and how to test for them, maybe? What, I what's your have thought? seen all sorts of uh, videos or pictures of poop and they have worms in them and everybody's talking about uh, worm deworming and do you do the natural chili powder stuff or do you actually get medication for it? Right. And I'm not sure what to do. Yeah. So that is one thing, like a, a ton of um, comments and, and uh, posts about natural remedies, right? And you, mm-hmm. you mentioned chili flakes, diatomaceous earth is another one, garlic. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, I call them pizza toppings. Diatomaceous mm-hmm. earth is, I mean, it's natural. It does have proven effects against um, parasites, roundworms, or worms, internal parasites, and ectoparasites, right? So you can use that around your home just to protect against bugs. Now, to that effect, though, again, it's not very effective, right? It can be part of a multi-pronged strategy, if you want to okay. think about it that way, to control both intestinal, like internal parasites and external parasites. Um, and again, remember, it's the food grade version is the one that you want to be using mm-hmm. and not the other commercial product. Yeah. So while that is a part of a strategy, what you're going to hear from me and what I advocate for are things that are proven, data-driven, um, and, and have science behind their use, right? So they've been proven, they've been efficacious. In the case of drugs, these are always going to be FDA-approved okay. drugs. They're going to be, um, again, tested for safety and efficacy. So what we're going to do today is talk about a product that came on the market, Safeguard Aquasol. Uh, it's labeled for poultry. It was launched to backyard owners back in January of this year. Okay. And full disclosure, I do work for the company that, that produces the product, Merck Animal Health. So just full transparency, they're not paying me any money. I just talk about them. And I, I represented the product uh, from a technical standpoint when it was launched, and so I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> We're out at Maggie's Pen here, and we just want to talk a little bit about her setup, her waters, and what we may need to adjust uh, temporarily to, uh, to give the medicine. Maggie, tell us a little bit about what you have here and your setup. Well, because it's so hot with summertime, I have put two different waterers in so that they don't run out of water. I'm always worried about it. And when I come home from work, put a frozen bottle of water in their waters too to cool it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Again, we're in Central Texas. It's August. It's typically the hottest month of the year. Um, while it has been milder this summer, it's still very hot relative to most places. And cooling down the water is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. I do suggest, maybe you've heard me say it, not ice water. People like cold water. Mm-hmm. And people think that other everything else likes cold water, right. which is not the case. And actually, you can stop the birds from drinking because it's too cold and it shocks them and so it mm-hmm. knocks them off of water. Okay. So cool water, yes. Cold water that's, is best avoided. Okay. So Maggie's got two waters in here right now for the summer. But to make it easier on her, I'm going to suggest that she takes out one of the waterers while she's tr- treating, while she's deworming the birds. So with Maggie's nine hens at three pounds each, give or take on average, the total dose there is when we multiply that 27 pounds times 0.00227 mm-hmm. gives us a, a dose of 0.06 mLs. It's a very, very, very small amount, so less than a tenth of a mil. Now that number, what you get is the amount of mils per day that we're gonna to use to deworm these chickens. But the duration of the dose is gonna be five days. The limit on using the product in small flocks, the label reads that you, can, you cannot use it in flocks that are less than 22 pounds. Okay. The reason for that is we just can't measure that small of a dose with the syringe. What we're looking at here is uh, Safeguard Aquasol is the product that we've been discussing so, um, up to this point. And it's gonna be a three mil presentation of the bottle. So this three mils can treat 264 pounds for five days. So okay. again, it goes back to, it takes a very, very small amount to treat your flock okay. and, um, and it's concentrated. Okay, so what you're gonna find is small glass vial and obviously it comes with directions and it comes with the chart, how many pounds you have in the house 
how much stock solution to mix it with, et cetera. So you can find all the directions in that um, in the product insert, which is on the inside. So the top of the bottle has an insert that allows you to put the syringe in and draw the product out. So you want to make sure that you shake it very well. You're safe to leave this up to 24 hours without worry of it settling out of solution in your waters. Okay. So it, this ensures that you know when the chicken drinks, they're always going to get the same dose. So what you'll see here, this whole syringe, the entire syringe, if I load it, is one milliliter. And if you remember, we did the math for Maggie's 27 pound flock and we needed 0 0.06 ml. So that's less than a tenth. And so you'll see the first marked graduation on here is 0.1. So we actually need slightly half of that. And that's to treat, that's 0.5. And so in this case, I'm just gonna round up to 0.7. Again, we're rounding weights there. This product is very safe. We've run safety studies on it, efficacy at up to 15X, and there's no issue there. So we're gonna give 0 0.07 mLs of this product to treat Maggie's birds. We've got four cups of water here. We're gonna make this pre-dilution. And again, that's just so this goes in the suspension. We know that it's uh, been mixed well. So I suggest just take your syringe. Um, I'm gonna draw some water up in there and then just squeeze it back in. Just a few rinses of flushes with the syringe and make sure we get all the product out. And you can see it goes in the suspension actually really well. And so what I'm gonna do is just give this a little mix. This is the amount that we're going to mix in their drinking water. Let's say every day Maggie's chickens consume a gallon of water. We're gonna put this in about a half gallon, right? Okay. That ensures that your birds are gonna drink all the water, all the medicated water before okay. the end of the day. You've got two waters out there right now. Mm -hmm. My suggestion would be just Bring that back to one. Okay. And again, as soon as that's cleaned up for the day, provide fresh water for the rest of the day okay. and uh, that everything should be fine. And again, we're gonna do this same dose um, for five consecutive days. Okay. So I get a lot of questions on what does the concentration need to be? The concentration here is not important. When you take any medication, you're not concerned about the amount of water you drink with that particular tablet. It's all the same because the medicine you need is in the actual tablet. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what's happening here. We know how much water that bird's gonna drink. Okay. Um, and bigger birds drink more water, smaller birds drink less water. That's kind of how we know that the birds are getting dosed equivalently. So again, as long as they drink the volume of water, they're gonna get the correct dose. There's a lot of comments in the forums about utilizing the goat products or other dewormers. The active ingredient is the same uh, across the whole Safeguard brand. So Fembendazole is gonna be the active ingredient there. There's some key differences in the product that was launched for backyard poultry. And the Safeguard product for, for goats, again, is a drenched product that was meant to be given orally. Another important factor to remember is that when we're dosing these animals, the Safeguard ruminant product is intended for ruminants, right? So ruminants, four stomachs, chickens, mm -hmm. what we call monogastrics, have one stomach, and they process things, especially pharmaceuticals, very differently. Um, the ruminants have the ability to recycle the, the Fabendazole product, whereas chickens, they have like an average feed passage time of four hours. So they eat, oh, yeah. four hours later it's coming out. Think about it, they're birds, they need to be light, be able to move, so they digest things really quickly. So we give it differently in birds and chickens. Basically that extends the duration of the compound of fembendazole on the worm, so it has more activity or more time to work against that worm. The best way to know when to treat is to do a fecal. Okay. Um, any veterinarian can run a fecal exam and what we're gonna do is go into the coop. We've done it here already, just a simple Ziploc bag. And just like you would pick up dog poop, I, I t folded this bag inside out, went and picked up a couple droppings in the pen. Actually, I scraped some off of the uh, roosting bars. That's a good spot for it too, because there's manure there for a couple days. And I'll just scrape that, put it in the bag. Obviously it doesn't take a lot, a few grams. And your veterinarian is gonna take this and do a fecal flotation and actually look for the worm eggs. Okay. And if you've got worm eggs in there, that means you've got worms, right? Okay. And so that's, a, that's really the best data-driven way to determine if you've got worms or not and you need to treat. I think a good deworming program on a relatively regular basis, like if you don't have access to fecal flotations or maybe you, don't, you can't afford to run the fecal flotations out, out of that clinic, about every two months. This is a very safe product. And again, from a welfare standpoint, we don't want intestinal parasites in our birds. So. <clears throat> While right now we're not, um, we don't have the ability quite yet, but one of the services the poultrydoc.com is going to be providing um, as we grow the site is the ability to, for you to send in these fecal, fecal samples to us and we can run those flotations for you 
and do the accounts and give you that data back to know when is a good time to treat and when's not a good time to treat. Maggie, I really appreciate you spending the time with us um, or letting us spend time with you. And I wanted to follow up. Is there any other questions that you had about today and about deworming? Is it okay to treat the whole flock together? Yeah, that's a great question and one that we often get and thanks for bringing it up. So we can assume if we find, like in this fecal sample, if we found parasite eggs in here, roundworm eggs, sequel worm eggs, that all of the chickens are gonna be exposed to that. Just because we find, you may have uh, noticed the chicken actually poop out worms. Mm -hmm. It's very likely, almost a 100% likelihood that all the chickens uh, will have some degree of worm burden. Okay. And so it's always best to treat the entire flock. That just makes sure, one, it does a couple things. One, it, it, from a welfare standpoint, we ensure that we get rid of all the worms in mm -hmm. the flock. But also, if we don't treat all of them, there's going to be the likelihood of building resistance. In this case, we want to make sure we treat all of the flocks so we don't just treat one chicken and then the rest continue to pick it up. So we want to always use drugs, whether it's a dewormer or antibiotic, uh, judiciously. And in this case, the judicious use would be to treat the entire flock. Okay. I hope everybody enjoyed the episode and learned a lot about uh, intestinal parasites, roundworms and sequel worms in particular. Thanks for joining. Peck that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave us some comments below. I'm sure if you've got questions, it's something I didn't answer, uh, let us know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks again. Thank you.